Welcome back to the American Athletic Conference 2022 Media Days. Navy kicks us off in our second portion. Ken Niamatololo has been there for forever, 15 years. Yeah. Uh, continues to do their style of offense there in the triple option. What makes this team so difficult to play against year in year uh, It's just the blocking schemes, how they do it. They're consistent and, and good quarterback play. Ty Levitai comes back. That is huge for Coach Niamatololo. And it's just, you know, when you play Navy, you're going to play a hard-nosed, disciplined program. And, and they just don't change their way, and they get after it. And you mentioned it. It's probably a blessing that he doesn't have to deal with the transfer portal. But, you know, that is something that the academies now, they can't even really look around like the other programs. It's something that they have to deal with. And it wasn't maybe the year they wanted record-wise, but at the end of the day, they came off beating Army, which is really what they care about the yeah. other day. December 10th is the rematch against them. Excited to see Navy versus Army at the second weekend of December. Let's get to Coach Ken Niamatololo. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. You returned 13 starters from last year. When you look at the presence that you have on your team, a returning quarterback, where the strengths lie in this team this year? I think the strength just lies in our leadership. You know, really excited about this team. Uh, you know, really loved what they did this offseason from January to now. Uh, they've been working hard. Kind of a selfless group, a uh, group that cares about one another. Just really excited about the makeup of our football team. Well, we will toss it down to Chuck Sullivan, who will facilitate the media questions that you will get. Coach, Chuck, take it away. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Coach, for joining us. And for those who are joining us for this second wave of schools, um, please use the raise hand feature uh, in your Zoom to uh, to be put in the queue. Uh, we'll start with Dan Tortora from wakeupcalldt.com, please. Good afternoon, Coach. How are you? Dan, how you doing? Doing well. Uh, to take a look at the fact that, you know, in realignment right now, a lot of people are talking about Notre Dame coming out of independence and going into a conference. Navy did that after so many decades looking back on it hindsight 2020 what can you say about leaving independence to become part of this american athletic conference and, and what it's done for navy in your opinion well i i've loved being in this conference uh super competitive i think our players or everybody in our program has enjoyed being in such a competitive league i mean you've seen the winner of our league has always gone to a new year's six bowl you know, I, I see some of the rankings from this year, which, you know, deler deservedly so the way things are. But, you know, the top two teams, I mean, we were in a, we were one, one score losses to both of them. And, you know, and we beat UCF last year. So to me, it just shows you in this league, anybody can win. It's a tough league. Um, but I, I thought us coming into this league, that was great for our program. And obviously the way the realignment's going, I think all of us are just, we'll all see how it all settles down and settles down, um, settles out. But I think it was great for our league. And a quick follow-up for you, just why it's made so much sense to to be a part of Navy and to continue to be here. You've had other opportunities and other phone calls. You and I have spoken about it before, but you've stayed true to Navy and kind of Grandpa Ken here with the uh, tenure that you have inside of the American Athletic Conference. Well, the grass isn't always greener. The grass isn't always greener. Um, you know, I, I, there have been 36 head coaching changes in our league since I've been in the in this league, and so very, very fortunate to be here. I coach great young men. I love the Naval Academy. I love Annapolis. I mean, I don't want to leave. I mean, just you coach at a great place. You coach great people. You love coming to work every day. Uh, the United States Naval Academy in the Navy Football Brotherhood is a special place. And I think sometimes in this profession, uh, the money is so lucrative that sometimes you can start chasing the wrong things. And I've just been very fortunate to be here. Take our next question from uh, Bill Wagner with the Capital Gazette in Annapolis. Good to see you, Kenny. Hey, Wags. So are you surprised if he picks second to last in the league? And uh, what do you attribute that to? I mean, like you said, you, you had a lot of close losses last year. You're, you were not as, you know, your record was not indicative of the type of team you were by the end. Are you surprised if he have such little regard from the rest of the conference? 
No, I mean, it, I think a lot of it's based on the last two years and the way you know our record's been. But even when we were winning, you know, in our league, I mean, prior to, um, you know, to COVID, I mean, I think we were tied for third in the total amount of wins in our conference. And so I think people have forgotten about that. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, this profession is what have you done for me lately? Uh, but I think most of it is WAGs based on the last two years, deservedly so. We haven't had a good record. Um, it's okay. We we like um, being picked as an underdog. I love this football team. I love what they've done since January. And you, do, you can't really worry about the preseason, preseason stuff. You just stuff that you have to do during the season that matters. And this is a follow-up. What are some of the reasons why you think Navy will be better than obviously some people think? Well, first of all, we've actually been able to do, this is the first year in the last, first time in the last three years that we've had a normal off season. And so I feel like we've been able to prepare our football team exactly like how we did 12 other football teams, you know, since I've been here. So that gives me the first and foremost, the greatest confidence in that since January, since we've been back until now, we've done the things that we normally do. We haven't had any COVID protocols or things that we had to do or uh, locked away in the dorms or whatever the case may be. We've been able to do everything that I know we've been able that we normally do. I was telling our strength coach in June when we were doing sled pulls and uh, pushes and we had a ton of guys throwing up. I just said, I, I don't know if I've ever been this happy to see you guys throw up again. But we needed that. I mean, because it's our, our, our nature and who we are, uh, just some of our off-season things that we do in our conditioning, uh, we've been able to do everything, Wags. And so seeing that from January to um, this whole off-season, seeing how our young team responded and beat Army, a team that everybody thought that would beat us, watching, you know, tire quarterback perform well in that game, um, seeing all of our young players play in this offseason, um, in spring ball, just, I've been doing this a long time. And so I just have a great feel by what I see, not by what anybody else tells me, but what I've seen since the Army game to now, I feel really good about this football team. We'll go next to Leo Haggerty with Amped Up Sports Network, please. Coach, one question and a quick follow-up. Uh, you're one of the few programs that the portal really doesn't affect. How nice does it have that continuity where the guys that finish the season with you are going to be the guys that you show up with next year? Well, actually, the portal does affect us. <laughs> Unfortunately, guys, they, but people still leave, and people still can leave. The way it doesn't affect us is we can't go into the portal. But, you know, people can still leave the Naval Academy uh, and transfer out, which has happened. And so it still does affect us. But the way it doesn't, that we're not able to do like everybody else is we can't go recruit out of the portal like every other school. Coach, quick follow-up. I was at your press conference when Brigham Young was calling after the Army-Navy game, and I may be paraphrasing a little bit, but you said you were asking me to choose between my team and my faith. That was really a tough decision for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, was. it was. It was It was. tough, you know, like you said, because that's my faith, but I love the school. But in the end, it worked out. You know, they had some things that they were looking for. I was happy where I was at. You know, I, the, the only reason I went to look at the school because I've um, been a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints my whole life. My son was playing there. So that's the reason I, you know, I went to go look at the school. But it all worked out in the right way. I'm grateful that I'm still here. And they got a really good football coach in Kalani Sataki. We'll go next to Trace Trilko, please, Sons of UCF. Uh, coach, what are you hoping your team will accomplish the most during preseason camp? I just I want to continue off by everything that we've been doing so far. Um, you know, I want to see how we started to run when we came back in January, and I was really excited. You know, just seeing the way we were running, 
And then I want to see how we did in fourth quarters. That's kind of our off-season conditioning that we do on a week, uh, weekly basis. And it's a, it's a grueling task and test we want to see. And I thought our guys did really well in that. Then spring ball, um, we got after each other offensively and defensively. Um, so I was really encouraged to see some of the growth of our team there. And then in the summer, you know, I was here in June, and I was really pleased by all the things that I saw in June. So it's just a continuation. I think so far we're doing all the steps, like I said. And being here so long, uh, I feel like we're preparing this team like we've prepared, uh, as I've been a head coach, prepared 12 other teams in this, the same steps. We're doing steps A through Z, where in the last two years we went A and we, and we skipped some steps. Um, we've been doing everything this offseason. So what I'm looking for in this in, in fall camp is just to continue that progress, that process of getting ready for a, a grueling season. Head coach Ken Montalolo, coach, before I let you go, I have one question. The, the players that play for you have such rigorous schedules with their training in football and classes. And now, as you mentioned, a chance to kind of go back to normal how things were three years ago. I'm curious what you and your players do for fun outside of football and class and everything. Oh, they're, they're normal kids. These are normal young men. They love to have fun. They're special and that their academics are important to them. Football is very important to them. So they try to balance that. But they're also normal kids. They love to have fun. So uh, we're in Annapolis. It's a great place to be very close to D.C., close to Baltimore. There's things to do around our town. and just It's a beautiful campus, and there's a lot of things around here. So these guys get a chance to have fun. <laughs> Good deal. I appreciate the time. Looking forward to watching you guys play again this year. Good luck 2022 season and throughout fall camp. Thanks for having me. Take care. You too, Ken Neon Montalolo in his 15th season. I, you know, I just wonder, like, do they play yeah. golf? Like, I don't know that you get four hours of time <laughs> during an off season. You know, we talk with the guys of Tulsa and the fishing and the grilling. Um, but you go and you and you cover this team, and it is um, incredible to witness yeah. what these athletes go through. I don't think they get as much free time as other student yeah. athletes, but the commitment, the level of commitment uh, the players give at, at Navy and any of the academies, for that matter, is unparalleled. I mean, it's unbelievable. And he mentioned it. We talked about the transfer portal, and you could tell in his voice mm. that it does affect them because yeah. he still can lose players, but he can't say, well, you know, I lost my right tackle. Let me go see in the portal yeah. if there's someone. that He just can't do that. So that's another disadvantage now to the academies that he's dealing with. Uh, but the biggest thing I take away from listening to Coach Niamatololo is they're back to normal. And that hurt them, not being Remember able to two do. two years ago? Yes. They hadn't done any And they had opened that game, and yeah. they didn't tackle, and it was a disaster. Yeah. Um, and so he's, they're back to normal. They're doing their regular practice regime, A to Z, like he said. So I think that's just going to pay dividends for the program. Let's take a look at the schedule for 2022 season. Of course, the very end will be December 10th against Army, the game that we all look forward to, the amount of tradition in that one. But they kick things off against Delaware September 3rd. And then they start the conference season September 10th against Memphis. Yeah, and I, I, you heard his comments there. I think the American Athletic Conference has been really good for Navy, to Navy, and he, he mentioned that. And they've done. And the thing about, we talk about the parity. I mean, we've seen Navy on the top end of this conference. Yeah. The last couple of years, as he said, they've come down, you know, the, the latter end. And so it kind of is indicative of what the preseason media poll. But the, Navy's one of those teams that's ranked in, the, in the, the bottom half. That would not surprise me if they make a huge leap forward this year and, and improve by three or four wins. It really would not. Well, let's chat with a few of the players. Safety John Marshall, kicker Bijan Nichols. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. John, I'll start with you. Coach Dina Matololo telling us that finally things are back to normal in terms of practices. You're able to do things the way things were three years ago. So far, like, how have you seen that transform the team in terms of camaraderie, really preparation for the 2022 season? Uh, first of all, thank you for having us. But I've seen a lot of the cohesion back uh, from what we had my, my first year, my plebe year. And that's just huge for the team, being able to gel with the guys. And you don't have that when COVID is coming on. So just that ability to get stronger and closer together, knowing the brother next to you's weakness, knowing your strengths is just really helpful and 
hopefully like we can elevate it to a level that we can win more games this year. Okay, we'll go to questions for the midshipmen, please. Just gonna use the raise hand feature in the chat to get in the queue. We'll start with Dan Tortora, please. This is for you both. I appreciate you being here. Just, you know, what it means from Navy, we've already heard about the difference that that is obviously there and in, in different ways when it comes to the transfer portal, but you're dealing with a difference all the time as students, athletes, and serving the country and how you feel that weight on your shoulders and, and how life at Navy is obviously well beyond football. Uh, I think that what we have here is just a great way to set us up. We're serving the greatest country in the world. We're able to do it for free. Uh, great education. You're serving with even better men and women to the right and left of you. I think the days do get long, and it's a grueling process, but I think it's all worth it in the end just to be able to say that you graduated from a place like this, played football in a great conference as the AAC, played against great teams, and then even tradition like the Army-Navy game. Yeah, definitely. I would agree with that. I think all around there's no better experience. Um, th there's a, a great sense of duty that I feel uh, every day walking around uh, in, in our halls and in the school, um, just seeing the people next to me and, and the, the people that I look up to who have gone here. Um, it's really inspiring, um, and that really ties over well into football and how close we feel, even within such a close place as the Naval Academy. Uh, I think Navy football uh, is, is even closer than that. And that's something that a lot of other teams don't have in college football. Well, I want to thank you, gentlemen, because my grandfather and great uncle both served. So I, I do appreciate your service. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll take the next question from uh, Bill Wagner, please. Capital Gazette. Well, for both of you, I'm curious as to what you all think about being picked second to last in the preseason poll. Um, obviously, the rest of the conference doesn't think much of Navy's chances of uh, is that is that a motivator for the players? Um, uh, to be 100% honest with you, I didn't even know that we, we were picked that low. Um, I, I don't really pay too too much attention to that. Uh, I think most of us are kind of head down and, and grinded out guys. Um, we don't really care what the other team thinks of us going into the game or you know what we're, we're picked as. Uh, we know we're going to go in there and work hard uh, and compete for the guy to our left and our right. Um, echoing what Bijan said, um, rankings are just rankings at the end of the day. Sure, are we gonna use it for fuel to motivate our season? Yeah, we might call upon it, but it's the guys in there being true competitors, You know, our ability to wanna win more than the other team wants to win, our ability to wanna crush them more than they wanna crush us is just ultimately what's gonna elevate us come the end of the day. I, I don't look at any of the rankings. You know, It tends not to be true come end of the day. And I'm excited for where we're at right now and where we're going to finish. We'll take the next question from. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Go, go right well, ahead. Just one follow up. What, oh, tell me some of the reasons why you feel Navy will be better than perhaps those outsiders think. I think our just heart and our like determination is what sets us apart from every other team. And there's no measurable way that they can put that on paper and rank us and I know the brothers left and right of me are working just as hard as me to do the same thing. It's kind of a thing that you you can't just measure us with with a number. It's kind of a thing you have to look at, you have to feel and I'm excited that we're going to be able to display that for the country come this fall. Yeah, I would definitely agree with what John said. There's no height or weight or statistic or, or speed or time or anything like that um, that you can really put on what we have going on here and in our locker room and on our field. Um, so I wouldn't expect uh, a lot of people to necessarily understand that unless they're in our locker room all the time and they're, they're part of the brotherhood. Any other questions, Bill? All right, we'll move on to Trace Trilco, Sons of UCF, please. Uh, for each of you, a lot of close losses last season. What are some things that you think you need to work on in preseason camp that will help flip the script in 2022? I think just this offseason, we've really harped on being more detail attentive. 
Um, the effort piece is always going to be there for us. We're always going to be flying around. We're always going to be making the most of what we have. But just the thing that coaches have harped on and we have harped on as a class is that we need to be better with the details. And ultimately, if we can put those together, I feel like a lot of those close games come our way and ends up being a much better season for us last year. Uh, even though that's a pass, it's what we're going to look on forward to this year. And I think if we can do that, we'll be a very good team. Uh, yeah, I don't think I could have said it any better. Uh, it, it's the details that Navy football relies on and the attention and passion with which we carry those out. Um, I, I think that's going to be the difference in what, we're, what we have going already, what we're going to push forward through with uh, fall camp and then into the season to flip, flip a lot of those games. John Bijan, we appreciate the time. Good luck 2022 season. Excited to watch you guys start things off on September 3rd. Thank you. Thank you. There you have it. That was Navy. It was, when they talk about close losses, I yeah. think that the being able to practice like normal, well, being help. able to have those situational awareness, being able to be able to tackle like you could and give that effort goes a long way in terms of late, late games. There's no doubt it does. Like I said, it's going to play huge dividends, and I think it will flip the script, um, if you will, for them. And just uh, I tell you, whenever we interview Naval Academy players like that, I, I always feel better about our country yeah. because those are our future leaders. So I, I always feel good. And how about Bijan Nichols giving some kicker love, right, Bijan? being in there? Did yeah. not miss an extra point last year, 28 for 28. 15 for 19 in field goals. Now you know why Coach Ken had him up there representing the yeah, team. Yeah, always some stand-up guys, and we thank you guys for your service as well.